Hi, this is Robin again with my very bad microphone. You probably noticed that on the last few um, uploads here. Anyway, today um, in this lesson, I'm going to go over a couple of three-letter roots. Well, one three-letter root and one two-letter word. Before we got into the systematic going through the alphabet in our little fellowship, we did a couple of random things, and then it was it was requested, and it was obvious that it made more sense to do something a little more systematic rather than just randomly do words. But I'm going to go over those since sometimes I refer to these things later on. Okay, one, uh, the week that we were going over Exodus 2, there were a number of these words in that Parsha. So we went over this. Yod Lamed Dalit, and it's pronounced Yalad. That's the three letter root. And if you put these vowel markings under it, that's how you would pronounce Yalad. And it's the root for to bear a child, to sire, to give birth, to beget, to be the parent. And it could be a man or a woman. When you read through all the begots and so and so begot so and so and he begot so and so, this is the root, yalad. And the next word is the same letters, with different vowels. And this time, instead of being pronounced yalad, it's yelet. Now, most Hebrew words have the accent on the last syllable. You assume that, you take that as a given. But when you have this a eh sound in the vowels, yelet, then it's going to have the accent at the beginning. That's an aberration. And if you're used to saying very many Hebrew prayers, you'll, um, in many of them, it'll talk about, bless are you, God, king of the universe, Melech HaOlam. And the Melech has these same vowel markings. It's Melech, not Melech, even though most words have the accent on the end. So this is Yelid, and it doesn't apply to both genders. This is a male child. Next word is going to be the plural of male child. And making sure, okay. This is pronounced Yeladim. Now, in Hebrew, when you change tenses of verbs or you add prefixes or suffixes, even making it plural, the vowel sounds change. It's not going to be Yeladim. It's Yeladim. And that's something that we don't have a lot of in English, so it takes a little getting used to. For example, if you have one chair... If you make it plural into two chairs, you do not change in English the CH to an SH, the AI sound to a U, and drop the R because it's a weak letter. You don't have one chair and two shoes. You have one chair, two chairs. Now, there are all those strange things like one woman, two women, um, one sheep, two sheep. We do have things that don't fit the rules but we don't change the sounds on a regular basis. On a regular basis, you're going to be changing the vowels and the accents and the sounds in Hebrew. So this is um, he begat or she gave birth. Um, no, it wouldn't be she gave birth, but yalad, because that would be, be yalad. Anyway, yalda. Anyway, um, the verb itself in its root form could apply to a man or a woman. A yelid is a male child, Yeladim is several male children, or it could be a mixed group. 
boys and girls. There was another word that was related to this that showed up in Exodus 2. Yeah, okay. Okay, and that is pronounced Mialda. Mialda. Here is Yelid, here or Yalad, those same three letters in the middle, but you have a prefix and you have a suffix. The suffix, the ah, in many cases just means feminine. Um, the hey on the end of a letter can do a lot of things, but one of the things, and I didn't happen to mention this, in the hey lesson that I recorded is that sometimes it's just making the word feminine, taking a man's name and turning it into a woman's name, for example. So in this case, this is going to be a female of some sort. It's going to have something to do with giving birth. And there's a mem in the front. Now, lots of times the mem in the front means the place of. That's a good Good place to start when you're trying to figure out what a word might mean. In this case, that's not what it means. It's something else entirely. What is a woman having something to do with giving birth other than a mother that shows up in Exodus 2? Midwife. This is the Hebrew word for midwife. And then another word, or it's actually a phrase, that has to do with yalad. And this is going to take a couple of, well, two or three lines, because the next word is the longest. And this is going to be modern Hebrew, so there are no vowel markings. In modern Hebrew, you just have to know how it's pronounced. This is yom. It means day. You've probably heard yom for a lot of things. Yom tov. Um, Yom Kippur, and this word down here you may have also heard, Sameach, it means joyful or joyous. It's the way you wish somebody a good day, um, a happy feast, happy Hanukkah. And this word in here is, uh, make sure, I didn't think that.